Hello everyone. It is entirely too hot for this sweater, but this sweater on this channel signifies that we are officially in fall. <laughs> so I am drinking a cold drink out of a nice little Halloween mug to bring you a fall Rex video. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you love this. And of course, as always, this isn't even a request, it is an absolute requirement. I'm going to need book recommendations from all of you that one should read in the fall or what are books that you are excited to read this fall. So let's cheers my friends, give me your list and I'll give you mine right now. <laughs> These are some books that I've compiled that either feel like fall or I just feel like would be fun to read in the fall. It's interesting, when you title a video Fall TBR, you don't actually need to explain it <laughs> because I think the title speaks for itself. So let's just jump in. I'm going to give you the biggest book on this list first, and that is Project Hail Mary. Here's the deal. Uh, this doesn't really feel like fall at all. It takes place in space, but I want an excuse to talk about it. So <laughs> that's why it's in this video. Oftentimes during the fall season, I just wanna like curl up with a long book for a minute, you know? I wanna sink in, get to know the characters, get to know the setting, just kind of like sink into it. You know what I mean? Like a good cup of hot cocoa, which is more of a winter vibe, but I hope you know what I mean. <laughs> and this book does that. I mean, it's huge and it's an adventure from start to end. And to me, I think it makes sense to read it in the fall or really any season. It does not need to be fall. If for some reason you're watching this in the spring, I would still recommend <laughs> Project Hail Mary. This guy wakes up on a spacecraft light years from home, doesn't know who he is, where he is, or why he is where he is. And his memory slowly starts to come back to him. And ultimately he's trying to save the entire human race. So if that doesn't sound like fun, I don't know what sounds fun to you because that sounds like a blast, even Parker agrees. So that's the first one on this list. So I know I just said that sometimes I'm in the mood for like a book that I can really sink into in the fall, but these next two recommendations are the exact opposite of that. And that is two short story collections that I think are just absolutely divine. And the reason why they feel like fall to me is because I feel like when I picture like autumn or spooky reading, the idea of like cracking open an old uh, like book from Hocus Pocus and reading a story a night, you know what I mean? Like th for some reason, that's the vision. You know? So anyway, I'm here to recommend Sabrina and Karina. I read this last year and it was one of my favorite books of the year. I loved this collection of short stories. It was incredible. The writing was fantastic. It's always hard to describe a short story collection because you're being super vague because there's so many stories in one. But I will tell you a couple of my favorites was the title, Sabrina and Karina. That was one of my favorites from the book. And then I also really loved Ghost Sickness, All Her Names, and Sugar Babies. Although all of these stories were incredible. It's like one of my favorite collections I've ever read. And it was one of those collections that just solidified that 2021 was the year of the short story for me. So that's that. And then just last month, no, the month before in July, when I had COVID-19 <laughs> sponsored by sickness, I read Milk Blood Heat and loved it to death. This was a recommendation from one of my best friends, Jess, Jess Decker reads on Instagram. She is incredible and her reading taste is impeccable. And um, she had read this, said it was amazing. And so picked it up and it was like exactly what I needed when I was in bed sick, because again, I mean, my advertisement for this book was that you could read a story a night, but I devoured this book and read it in a day. If you had an excuse to lay in bed under the blankets and you wanted to have a book that kept your interest on every page, Milk Blood Heat could definitely do that for you. 
So I'm pitching you short story collections for two very different reasons. <laughs> Either you're reading one a night or you're somehow reading all of this in a single day. You won't go wrong with either one of these. So there you go. Okay. I'm speaking, <laughs> okay. Next up, I'm going to give you, yes, the most obvious book that I could ever put on a fall TBR. But I can finally talk about it because I had been talking about reading this book for so many years around fall and last fall was when I actually read it. And that is Dracula. It is a vampire story. Spoiler alert, it, there's a vampire in this one and it's creepy and it's weird and it's like actually eerie. There are moments in the book where I was like, ew, like get off the wall, you know what I mean? And um, I mean, if you haven't read it, then you might not know what I mean, but um, read it and then you'll know exactly what I mean. There's some creepy imagery. I just, we love a vampire story. We love a vampire story. And although Dracula is not the original, it is one that like everyone knows and reading the source material was, ew, <laughs> source material. Who the fuck? <laughs> what am I saying? Source material. Anyway reading this book and finally getting to it felt like a massive accomplishment and was just ultimately really fun to read. I read it for school and it was really cool to like be a part of those discussions, so. And then as I was saying, like Dracula is not the original, neither is this next book, but it is more original than Dracula and that is Carmilla. This one is shorter, my friends. Dracula is a big one. It's a long fucking book. Carmilla, short, sweet, seductive, sexy, fun, eerie, creepy, grotesque, all the things you could want. But it's basically about this woman vampire who seduces another woman or human woman, <laughs> not another human vampire because that wouldn't really go anywhere in terms of bloodshed. And in this copy, which I have talked about no less than 50,000 times on this channel, um, it's illustrated and the forward or the, it's edited by Carmen Maria Machado, one of my favorite authors. And it just has such cool illustrations. And again, it's creepy and it's fun and it's shorter. So if you're like, hey, Dracula, but also long, try Carmilla, because it came before Dracula and it inspired parts of Dracula and it's just really good. So there we go. All right, next up, I'm just gonna be a literary bitch for you for a second. Go back and read some Sherlock Holmes. Just pick some of his famous, famous stories and just have a blast. Because when I read this for grad school, I remember thinking, okay, but these are old and I read a lot of thrillers at the time. I can't even tell you the last time I read a thriller. <laughs> but at the time that I read this, I thought I read enough mysteries. Like you're not gonna fool me, Doyle. And he absolutely did. There's just something about like old school mystery stories and old school mystery novels that oddly are always able to get me with the twist. They always get me and Sherlock stories are absolutely part of that category. Again, when I, I was such a little cocky shit about it. I was like, I know what's gonna happen. Like, it's cute that you're trying, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure you out. And no, <laughs> no, absolutely didn't. If I was gonna recommend you some, A Study in Scarlet is one of the most famous. Um, one of my favorites is A Scandal in Bohemia. And The Man with the Twisted Lip is also great. I recommend. Obviously, it's a recommendations video, right? Like, that's the whole point, right? Okay, great. All right, next up, I'm going to recommend Night Bitch. I read this back in January, and it's just one of those books that, like, I haven't really read anything like it before or after. This is a weird book. It's not for everyone, but for the people who have read it and love it, they really love it. So it's basically about this mother who has a son and her motherly instincts start to take over in like a very primal way. And she starts to become a dog. So it's like very werewolf vibe. You know what I mean? And for fall, that totally makes sense. Like this to me screams fall. It is like weird animal transformation, like werewolf, primal beast type of feeling. Um, and it also has like really interesting conversations around motherhood. But I will say 
it's not for everyone and there is some gruesomeness in it, especially towards other animals because she herself is becoming an animal and an animal hunts. And so there is some gruesomeness. So it's not for everyone, but I'm specifically recommending it because it kind of has that werewolf vibe to it. And there is violence, but there's also like just really interesting conversations around motherhood and like mother protectiveness, you know? So not for everyone, but I thought it was really unique and a very, very interesting story. All right, next up on this list is another book that I had wanted to read for so long, finally got to this year and absolutely loved, and that is Yoke. The first reason this is on there on this list is because it's just so well written and so good, but it also has like sibling dynamics, which I live and breathe for. But another reason is that it takes place in New York City, which for some reason, like I've only been to New York City twice in my life <laughs> and it was for two really short periods of time. But fall is like the season I associate with New York City. So a lot of the times that I was reading this, I pictured them like on like orange leaved streets and like in crisp and cool weather. And I actually think there's part of the book that's like in the heat of summer, but any book that's set in New York just gives me that fall vibe in my head. So I think it's really well done. Again, I love sibling dynamics and this one has a sibling dynamic between two sisters and one of the sisters was just diagnosed with cancer. And so the two of them are like still sisters. Like they still argue, they still bicker, they still fight, they still resent each other for things that have happened in the past. But ultimately they love the shit out of each other. And it's really, really fascinating to watch as their like love expands and grows for one another over the course of this book. All right, next one, we have maybe the most obvious book I could put on this list, aside from Dracula, because I've already said that. I've already said I gave you an obvious one. So I'll just give you the most obvious romance I could possibly put on this list, and that is The X-Hex. I think this book literally takes place during Halloween, or like the week before Halloween, unless I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, then I didn't just say what I just said. But The X-Hex is all about the main girl's a witch, and the main guy's a wizard and they fell in love years ago and they haven't seen each other in years and years and years. And he's finally back in her little town, which feels like Stars Hollow or like whichever city Hocus Pocus takes place in. <laughs> um, but it feels like a small town. So it's romance, it's Halloween. I remember feeling like super cozy when I was reading this and just feeling like I was in a Disney Channel original movie. So. I liked it and there's a sequel that's coming out or just came out and I'm interested in it, but it's a sequel. It's not like, it's not a spinoff. So we'll see how it turns out. <laughs> All right, next up we have another classic and it's even more classic than Dracula and that is Macbeth. This is my favorite Shakespeare play. Admittedly, I've only read four of his works, so I'm no pro on this subject. But like, what's better than three witches that like have a prophecy about a uh, death and then that death is actually a murder spurned on by the, uh, spurned on? Spurred on by the prophecy that the three witches gave. I mean, it's really creepy. And I remember like, I didn't wanna take my Shakespeare class. I was like, this is not my subject. This is not my era. This is not my century. I'm not gonna understand it. And Macbeth kind of lit something in me where I was like, actually Shakespeare can be really fun and creepy and cool. It's just, it's creepy. There's witches, there's prophecy, there's murder. There's, I was gonna say death, but murder implies the death, so. Anyway, yeah, I really loved this one in grad school. It was like one of my favorite books that I read, so yeah. All right, and then the last book I will mention is again, another book that I had had my eye on, finally read, and I'm so glad that I read, and that is Before the Coffee Gets Cold. This literally takes place in a cafe the entire time, so like, what could get more autumn than that? But you can go to this cafe and if you sit in a very specific spot in the cafe, you can go back in time, but only for as long as the coffee is warm. 
So once the coffee gets cold, you have to head back. It's definitely a fall book for me. I wish I read it in the fall. It would have felt like so perfect, um, but it was just really, really great. It's short, it's sweet, it's not super happy all the time. There's actually some sad moments because it really is people that have like things that they needed to say to someone or things that they regret. So you're kind of like sitting with people as they're going through some really tough moments. So I thought it was really great. And that is the last book on this Fall Rex list. Please let me know what books you might recommend me or other people in the comments or what books you're really excited to read this fall. And that's what I've got. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.